But as you heard from the medical examiner, Christopher Jeffrey was shot in the head, right in the right side of his head, from a distance of a few inches to arm's length. Someone stood over that man and made a conscious decision to take a gun and to shoot him. And ladies and gentlemen, it's the same type of ammunition as that black cartridge that was found at apartment B1. So once again, the law does not fix the exact period of time that must pass between the formation of the premeditated intent to kill and the killing. It only must be long enough to allow reflection by the defendant. And if there's two men participating in this crime, one of them is driving. The other one is going along. One or both of them have guns. It's going to take two men to carry Christopher Jemery's body all the way from this dead end road out into that field in order to execute him. Think about that evidence. Keep in mind that both the unfired round, that there's a photo of, there's an unfired target <coughs> round that's found at 530 Bell Tower. Investigator Mott testified that that was manufactured by the Federal Corporation. And the spent shell casing found in Sanford also manufactured by the Federal uh, Company. So the fact that a box of Remington ammunition is even brought to your attention is of no evidentiary value to this case. It's in evidence that Mr. Jemery uh, was shot with a 22 caliber bullet. Uh, Justin told the police in the interview that uh, Christian Cruz had a 22 caliber handgun. Michaela Cormier told us that Cruz showed her that same 22 caliber handgun and he was known to carry it around. She said that when Christian Cruz had the 22, that Justin Charles had a nine. They were showing them off, and they were switching them off. At times, she said, Justin Charles had the 22, and Christian had the 9. There's two guns, both of them possessing that 22. It is relevant that 22 LR cartridges with Justin Charles' fingerprint on the box were located in 590 Bell Tower, the duplex where he was living. 